Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to another meeting, DI meeting. So good to have everyone here. So um, let's move to the agenda for today. I think let me paste the, or Elizabeth, could you help me to that? Okay, so let me see. Okay, so first up, uh, discussion about um, people first language in metrics. So I don't know who has that up. I don't know if there was anything that we needed to discuss since last time. I think that mm -hmm. was kind of a, I wouldn't necessarily call it a tangent, but it was a, a path we went down as we were talking about, um, I think the metric around colorblindness. Okay. Um, so I attached some of those links just as um, reference if people wanted to do a little bit more research or dig into things on their own. Um, but I don't have anything more to say unless somebody else wants to discuss it. Yeah, I think um, so lately, like this week, I just seen a series on Netflix, Atypical. So I this like prior to seeing that series, I did not know about people first languages, right? So when I was like watching that series, I'm still watching it. So the, the series is about um, a kid with like autism. So um, the dad came to like the talks and then he referred to his kid as my autistic kid. And then someone, you know, corrected and was we use people first languages here although i didn't i didn't think about like doing the research so coming back to the meeting minutes and saying this it's just like it's blending in right here yeah. so that's what i wanted to say and it's a great idea because i used to volunteer or i still volunteer for a sickle cell foundation where we try not to use um person with sickle cell disease but we use the word the warrior right because then they go to like a whole lot so we use the word warriors refer to them as warriors right so yeah like it's a plus one for me i have a question about um that topic um do you think that this is something we should share with the broader uh community Chaos community? Like, do you can anybody on this call think of a place in other metrics or other working groups where this might pertain? I think it's more like a general thing. It's more like of a general thing, not just um, related to DI. It's like more of a general thing where you want to, you know, put that mindset like. Before now, I didn't know, I didn't know about it, right? But you know, watching the series and then seeing it here, right? Going through the links that was put in the docs, right? I now know about it, so I think we can extend it to general chaos community. Yeah, I tend to agree. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, just plop that on the agenda for next time is just a, a point of, of note for, for the broader community, if that's okay. Yeah, maybe also like in general meetings that happen on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. And then if anybody on this call is at that meeting, then we can bring it up together. So that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Okay, so is there any other view on this before we move to the next thing we have on the agenda? Thoughts, questions? Moving. Okay, so yeah, moving to the next one. So I think it's related to that one, right? Attention to color blindness. Is it related to? Yeah, I saw this one was related. I, I went into the metric. Um, it looks like we've still got a lot of comments and um, and suggestions to work through. So I guess this is just more of a housekeeping item that this one's on hold until next week. Okay, great. Okay, I think you put in an action item. Great, thanks, Matt. 
Um, so uh, moving on to the next one, uh, I see someone's typing events, location, inclusivity. Do you want to look at that or? This is just starting. I think this was another one that um, wasn't quite wasn't quite ready for the working isn't quite working ready for the working group today. Um, oh, okay. This is just something from the last agenda that wasn't deleted. Um, yeah, or it's it's more on hold as well. Okay, that's great. Okay, so um, we expect the next week then. So next item. Um, I think Matt, you have that um, right, John L. What's what's it about? Oh yeah, I can give a little context here. Um, <laughs> we so John um, and I had done some stuff for the Chaos Community Google Doc where we took um, the year twenty nineteen and converted it to Markdown. Um, and then put it into a repository. Um, and that process was pretty smooth. But after that, I wasn't quite sure what tool we had used. So my action item was to go and fetch um, the name of that tool. I got it now. And um, my, next, uh, my next task is to figure out how to use this, do, do like a test run and then um, okay. get back on that. Okay, great. I, I, I recently started using it like tools on Google Docs and it was like, I think I was using like a code editing tool or something. So I can help you with that, you know. Sure, yeah. Uh, this tool that we used before is based in um, Google Workspace. Um, okay. And I, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some manual work on it as well. So I'll reach out to you if I if I need help with that too. All right, great. What's, no problem. What's, where's the end destination for this? That's the question we had before too, um, on, on re regarding how we're going to place this. We have a, I think we have a spot in governance. I'll, I can find it real quick. But um, we have a spot in one of the main repositories where we um, where we figured out a good spot to put it in. We put it in that spot, and then um, not much else um, was done with that. So that's where we're trying to kickstart it back up. Did we put something in the Google Drive that the Chaos Community has, or not? Yeah, uh, I, the, they'd be stored as markdown files. Okay. So I just converted the Google Doc to a markdown file through the, the download. If we wanted to upload that somewhere, we could, I, I have it as a markdown file now. Yeah, I can drop the link to where we're putting these. Um, hang on one second, let me find it. Like one of the things that how I did it is I just downloaded the open document version of the document and then I used Pandoc, which is like a formatting conversion tool that'll go from open document text to markdown. That is a really nice and open way to do it. I, I write a lot of documentation. I'm biased. <laughs> So we have a, a folder for 2020. Um, do we want to drop it in that? Even though this kind of goes before that. Yeah, the, the format we had figured out in the community call before was that we were um, separating it by year. And then, uh, so like all of the meetings from, I'm using my hands, but my camera's not on, I just realized. All the meetings <laughs> from 2019 are here, all the meetings from 2020 are here in each working group repository. That way the documents are not like um, walking through marshmallows when you're typing in them. 
Okay, Justin, here's, uh, there's the drive with just all the meeting minutes. So I don't know if, or Matt, whoever wants to take time to split it out by year. Um, that's where it goes. I can drop the markdown file that I have in there, but I might not have time right away to do the hand editing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, um, Justin, if you can work your wizard magic with pen. Doc. I, I'm just not familiar with that process, but if you can create the markdown files for each of the repositories, I'd be willing to split them out and also add the images because that's the problem we had before is that we needed to add images uh, manually. I, I'm willing to do all the dirty work if you if you'd be willing to put the files, um, just the, the kind of basic markdown files. Yeah, if you can, um, Elizabeth, could you add me as an editor to that folder? I don't think I have a way to upload files here. Oh, yeah, let me fix that. That would be helpful, huh? I'll put my, my Google email in the, the chat. Uh, I'm just gonna, yeah, let's see here. It should be, anyone on the internet can edit, but I don't know why it's not letting you. Let me just add you explicitly. You should be good. Gosh, we're making stuff happen today. <laughs> okay, I, it just uploaded. You should see it there. I do see it. I always feel victorious when I somehow beat technology as its own game, you know, like it can be tricky, but we conquered you, Google. Take that. <laughs> Don't tell Sophia I said that. <laughs> okay. Um this is the part where I don't know if this topic is done. <laughs> Maybe. I guess no, we have done. <laughs> okay, sweet. So I, I think I have a topic. So I'm going to share my screen. It's as related chaos, um, the budget. I have like a couple of ideas. And um, before I create the pull request, I I want to like share those ideas first before. Oh, okay. Where do we think of this? Uh, Okay. Yeah. So um. So I, as regards the questions on the application, right? Um, I'll start with this one. Where is it? Okay. Yeah. Diversity access tickets. So usually, what I see is usually like sponsorship. Um, most of this, all the conferences I've seen do not like have here diversity access tickets we are giving out, right? But I have seen more of, um, apply for a sponsorship, you know, um, to get a ticket, like diversity sponsorship, and then you create an application and, you know, it gets reviewed. But I have really not seen like diversity access tickets or so I wanted to maybe make this like brother, like brother terminology. So we just have like diversity access tickets or sponsorship because at the end of the day, you know, they put in like, if you go to, they always have a link and it says scholarships. So yeah, so I wanted to get thoughts if, you know, this makes sense to change this to, you know, scholarships or diversity access tickets like both together so it doesn't I guess at least for the places I've seen it I usually see it written as like a diversity scholarship but I know mileage may vary there yeah I've actually got Linux Foundation open so let me know over there um so Linux Foundation does put it in as scholarships the break it out diversity registration and need based registration um, mm -hmm. and then they have travel funding 
I'm kind of curious, so I'm going to go peek over at Grace Hopper. I feel like there's a, there could be a better, I wish there was a term for a catch-all, <laughs> but we may just have to, to list examples or something. Yeah. Um, so programs. So, <clears throat> Anita Borg, which for anyone who doesn't know is Grace Hopper, has a section called awards and grants. But those may not be to actually apply for the, to go to the conference. Yeah, these aren't necessarily to go to the conference. Um, I'll check OpenStack, but we haven't had a conference in a year. <laughs> you can check all things open to. So Grace Harper calls it scholarships and complimentary registrations. Okay. So I was e so there would be a, a metricing issue, a badging problem, because I found a totally different section of their website. Um, I did not specifically go to Grace Hopper and that was probably my fault. Um, yeah, we don't have anything on OpenStack's website because all our stuff's been free while we're virtual. Um, So Matt, what did you say was Chris Hopper's? Uh, oh, I was looking at Anita Borg. Is that's the, the same that's, thing? That's that's Chris Hopper. Uh, it says VGHC scholarships and complimentary registrations. If you want to find it, it's under the attend section. Where it's normally that's normally where I found them too, in other sites as well. Hmm. I can't even find the Chris Hopper section of the website. I'm not doing very well. <laughs> Our events, few events. Okay. Um, so sponsorship like, seems, like yeah, sponsorship seems like a valid way to call things. Yeah, Grace Hopper, they're still charging a whole shit ton of money, even though they're virtual. They charge more than the big tech conferences, which I think is insane. You mean you don't love sitting in Zoom webinars all day? <laughs> the one thing I really hate about Grace Hopper is they have open source day and people, including the mentors, need to give up a whole day of their conference to attend or to help out during them. So I was kind of happy when they did this standalone event last month because I always thought, if you're charging like $1,200 to $1,800 for a ticket, don't make people spend a day of their time volunteering or learning something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, these are all scholarships, except for the women in color. Um, which is a registration. I do want to mention, not that we're talking about badging, um, we do have, so um, this meeting is at 10 US Central and at, um, at 830 US Central, uh, kind of early, but works for a lot of people, um, is the, the badging weekly meeting. And um, pretty soon here, we're going to be starting up the outreach meeting again looking for more viewers um, that are like long term and then also looking for um, ways to reach out to events and organizations. I'm just plugging the, the badging meetings because um, we've been um, on Sunday. Sometimes we have trouble with attendance and sometimes we have like six people. I guess it just depends on the week, um, but we're looking for more consistency there. Yeah, I review, but I don't even have that on my calendar, to be honest yeah. with you, Matt. It's not on the chaos calendar at all, Matt. Do you want me to put it on there? 
yeah okay. please uh, i know the i know the um the outreach one was on there um but uh we had okay. to we, well over the summer we just decided to have one meeting and concentrate on that um uh, but i think we could start the outreach meeting depending on interest as soon as next week um it, it's just as it's just as simple as um putting a zoom meeting on the calendar basically uh, when, when is that again? Tell me. Sorry. Oh, uh, I'll send you uh, okay. on Signal. I can send you all the information. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So back back to Ruth's question <laughs> is uh, so the basically the question is should we decide should we add diversity access tickets or scholarships like lump them together right just kind of adding yeah. that explicitly adding that I don't see mm -hmm. why not it seems like people are using that you know, interchangeably or, or, you know, definitely it's, it's around. So, yeah. Okay, sweet. I'll send the pull request then. So second question is on um, measuring attendee and speaker demographics. So let me show you a very nice one, a conference we badge that was some months ago did. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Yeah, so um this conference um hyperledger had like you know a start for um speaker and attendee demographic and this happened like after we badged a conference, um, a conference is the applicant submitted and then they made this change. So which was like, you know, we made the suggestion that, you know, was taken. So what I've been trying to do, this is like really, really nice and good, like having this here. What, so what I've been trying to do is like make a suggestion. Okay, you can do this, right, as you know, a very good thing to do but i think um it's sort of like a big suggestion to ask right and um we we are not sure if people want to display this kind of you know information like they basically just answer and say okay we have a process right we have a process and they list out like the pro process here about how they measure attendee demographics but it's not on their side just like the other conference so sometimes i just do like okay you can do this this is nice right so uh, i really don't know if that's like a big suggestion to because for this um for this applicant we haven't got like a response this is, like the second the second um, or third submission from this account. There's no response as per that suggestion, right? So one question is, is it a big suggestion to ask, should I always scrap that out and just do the reviews? And second is about feedback. So there's a part that talks about um, on the reviewer checklist. There's a part that talks about um, if the event requests feedback, something like a post survey, right? And usually on this part, there's no there's no field that says, okay, do you have a post survey, right? So answering this part is usually flawed, like, okay, how they list the process, but then there's nothing about requesting feedback, right? Feedback is like at the end of the event, you know. So, two questions. So let me re let me restate. it. <laughs> One is my suggestion to big of an ask, like suggesting they have this pretty graph, something like this pretty graph. There, is it too big to ask? And then, how do we impute requesting feedback? Should we? say do you have a survey post survey so reviewers can answer this question correctly
I think it makes a lot of sense to be more clear about what we're looking for uh, with the, the speaker and attendee inclusivity. That makes a lot of sense. I was, you're kind of getting my brain going and um, I'm thinking about what if it would it make sense to have like an extra credit section since we're working to make the badge harder to obtain. Um, it would be like things that are really nice to have. And if you need the extra points, you can do it. I'm kind of thinking in an academic sense, right? But like, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds nice. But then we actually want them to do it, not because of the points, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think point point motivation is better than no motivation. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I do like that idea a lot, Matt. Um, because I was thinking, you know, like some some conferences are small and they might not have the resources to do some of these things, um, but they might, you know, have a different set of 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 resources or or in their network where they could provide something else that would be you know, pretty great. So um, like for instance, if they had someone, just as an example, they had someone on staff that knew how to, you know, that knew ASL and could, you know, um, translate the talks in real time, but they didn't have, you know, the, the financial resources to do something else. Like that would be a cool thing that they would have a special, you know, they would have that access to that. Am I making sense? I think it's a good idea, Matt, TLDR. It's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think we'll jot we that down. Of, oh, sorry. No, I just said we'll jot that down for budget next week. Yeah. Um, since the chaos, we we um have announced this in the meeting already, but in the badging meeting already. But since the chaos, time got moved back for the freeze. So now that it's in September, we're we're in October now for our freeze. And uh, that means we'll have plenty of time to hammer these things out. It's great to have things to work on uh, during times like that. Yeah, okay. I see, thanks for the feedback. Okay, I'm looking forward to stop share. Um, I'm supposed to know this. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so um, yeah, um, I think that's the last thing. Do we have any other, you know, topics to discuss? Topics, topics, topics. Okay, so I think we can, you know, have eighty minutes back. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you everybody for participating. Hi, um, Lawal, I don't think I have seen you in the call before. Um, Kafaya. Yeah, Kafaya. Hi, I've never spoken before. <laughs> oh. You call me out. <laughs> That's why. Nice to meet I'm, you. I'm a UNO student. I work with Matt, the other Matt, and he just let me hop on the calls to observe and learn. Oh, nice. Your, your name sounds Nigerian. Your last I am. Name. I am Nigerian. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet everyone. Yeah, nice to meet you. I guess now that I've been called out, I'm I'm not nervous anymore. And I'll speak if I have sure, something to nice. say. <laughs> nice. Are you in the swap? Um no i'm not okay i, th I think we have uh this but you can drop the link to the slack oh lauren is also a UNO student too nice, oh, nice. Yeah, what up? and i think i've taken a class with matt snell before oh yeah. so sorry yeah. what's what's the meaning of you and all so I, I was about to google search that but I can oh just... it's university of nebraska in omaha Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Oh, nice. Mm, sweet. Okay, so um, Elizabeth just jo um dropped the Slack link so you can join. Slack. So
And if you also want to be a reviewer on Virgin, we'd love you to come help us out. Sounds good. Yeah, nice. Okay, so I'll look out for you on Slack. For sure. I'm trying to okay. make sure I join with the right email. Okay, <laughs> sweet. No problems. All righty. So um, I think. Sharing today, have... Ruth. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, okay. So um, have a lovely day. I think it's evening here already. So, <laughs> yeah. Bye. Right. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. See you later. Thanks for yeah. facilitating, Ruth. Yeah, good job, Ruth. Yeah, thank you.